Everyone today is looking to save money. And the younger workforce is often met with lower salaries, and just about this time is when they become ineligible for their parents' insurance plan. They're often met with major sticker shock when enrolling in their own insurance, which is why so many people find themselves asking, if I'm young and healthy, do I really need health insurance? So spoiler alert, we're not gonna make you wait until the end of the video to find out the answer is yes, you do need health insurance. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through some real life examples of costs without health insurance and give you some options of lower cost health insurance that you might not have considered. And if you do have questions about your health insurance, make sure to give us a call at the number on the screen and you can always reach us in the comments below because we are licensed health insurance brokers. And of course, please make sure to like this video and subscribe as well to stay up to date. So first, let's talk about some common healthcare costs without insurance. We're going to go over to the Healthcare Blue Book website. Now, their calculations have actually been published in peer-reviewed medical journals, so it's a very, very reliable site. And of course, you can access all of this information yourself. It's completely free. So this is healthcarebluebook.com, and you can create your own free account to have access to all of this information. Over here, you put in the procedure, you put in your zip code. We're going to use a North Carolina zip code for today. And this will help you to find out some information regarding average prices of that particular treatment in your area. So let's start with something rather simple. Let's start with a visit to the urgent care. So the average price of an urgent care in this area is 150 It ranges from 119 to over $224. The average adult gets somewhere between two to four colds per year. Maybe you do go to the urgent care every time you get sick. Maybe you don't. So that's, of course, without insurance. Now let's look at something else. I want to look at something that's going around a lot right now. I know a lot of people have had strep throat. So let's take a look at what that might be. So here are all the different procedures associated with the treatment of strep throat. So it could involve going to an urgent care, which of course I imagine it would. And then these are the different lab tests. So there's strep A and strep B. Let's just take a look at what some of the costs might be. So one of the tests for strep A, it looks like would cost maybe about $25. Let's see what one of the other strep A test costs would be. This one, for whatever reason, is about $53. I don't really know the difference between these different strep A tests, and I suppose it would depend upon the urgent care or physician's office that you go to. Unfortunately, it's probably a little bit tricky to find out in advance which of these tests they're going to use, and I imagine if you have a pretty bad sore throat, you're not calling around to see which offices use which tests to determine the lowest cost option available to you. And maybe it ranges. Yeah, so the first one was a lower cost. Then we jumped up a little bit. Now we're back down. And now let's take a look at that strep B test as well. Okay, so here's a strep B test, $29. Okay, so you see they range from in the 20s to the 50s maybe in addition to that urgent care. And of course, that's not even taking into consideration your antibiotic cost. All right, now let's take a look at something that you absolutely cannot control, which would be maybe an injury, something like a fractured ankle. Whoa. So that would cost $588 or anywhere between $478 to over $1,183. And that's just an ankle treatment in general. Now, if you're somebody who likes to take preventative measures, maybe you're somebody that gets a flu vaccine on a regular basis. So now we're looking at about $32. Now, if you don't have insurance, these are pretty much the kind of costs that you can absolutely expect you're going to encounter in a given year. But what you're not taking into consideration are more serious costs, which I'm sure you know could not only be thousands of dollars, but quite frankly, they could be tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of dollars. Look, the truth of the matter is, it's not just about the numbers. Uninsured people are far less likely to seek out medical care, whether it's in an emergency or if it's just preventative and diagnostic. And not having access and not going to those preventative and diagnostic appointments can make you miss something that's in the early stages, which could quite literally save your life. So let's talk about some health insurance options. First, there's group health insurance. If your employer has at least 50 full-time employees, they're required to offer you health insurance and pay at least 50% of your monthly premium. Now this is your best and least expensive option. 
Make sure you enroll when you first become eligible, and of course, make sure to re-enroll during your yearly enrollment period. Now, if you're not eligible for group insurance because you're working for a smaller company or you're a freelancer, there are other options as well, and we will talk about those in just a minute. Now, in the case of employer-sponsored group health insurance, or really just health insurance in general, you'll likely have the choice between an HMO and a PPO. HMOs will offer lower monthly premiums, but less flexibility. You'll have to have a PCP, which is a primary care physician, and you will need a referral to see a specialist. So that can mean more doctor's visits and possibly more time off work. Also, you will only be able to operate in network. And then there are PPOs. PPOs will have higher monthly premiums, but a lot more flexibility. No PCPs, no referrals to see a specialist, and you can go in and out of network. However, if you do choose to go out of network, remember that it will be more expensive than staying in network. The next largest option is, of course, a plan through the marketplace. So let's head over to healthcare.gov. So welcome to healthcare.gov. Now, some states actually have their own individual marketplaces. And if that's the case, well, that's not a concern. You can still come to healthcare.gov. And if your state has an individual marketplace, it will redirect you. So if you're not certain whether or not your state has an individual marketplace, this is still a great place to start. So let's start by putting in a zip code. So today we're going to put in an Atlanta zip code because the plans that are available to you are largely determined by your location. Next, it's going to ask for some questions about your household. Now, you can absolutely skip these questions. However, the information that you enter here is what is going to determine your eligibility for those premium tax credits. And eligibility for premium tax credits can save you quite literally thousands of dollars per year. So if you don't put in this information and you're not certain about your eligibility, then that's not really doing the best research possible because you're not going to be able to accurately compare plans and prices. So let's put it's just us and let's put 26, somebody that's just aged off their parents' health insurance plan and we'll click none of these. Confirm. All right, and let's put a salary. Based on the income and household information, you may qualify for an estimated premium tax credit of $149 per month. And here are the plans available. So right now it is sorting by lowest premium. There are 118 plans available, including catastrophic plans, which we will talk about later in the video. And we have bronze, silver, and gold available to us. Now bronze level plans will generally speaking be lower monthly premiums, but you're going to have a higher cost share. For silver plans, usually you're going to pay 30% and your health insurance plan will pay 70. For a gold, it's going to be 80-20. And actually, there aren't any platinum plans offered here, but that would be a 90-10 split usually. So here are the plans available. So as you can see, this is actually a pretty cost-effective plan, $137.53 per month. Now you do have higher deductibles here, of course, in this plan. Now the one thing to know is that your deductible is the same as your out-of-pocket maximum. So basically once you've met your deductible, you don't have any additional costs. Now these are pretty high deductibles. But what you should know is that there are plenty of benefits, your more basic benefits and preventative services and things like that, vaccinations, that are covered prior to meeting your deductible, many at no charge. So it's not like you have no coverage until you meet your deductible. It's just basically that you would have to meet your deductible prior to being covered for larger expenses. Here's another bronze plan. This one's a little bit more expensive with a slightly lower deductible. And in between meeting that deductible and hitting your out-of-pocket maximum, you have a 40% coinsurance. Now, something that's very, very, very important to look at with these plans is not just the prices, but also, yes, we're looking at HMOs, which mean that you need to stay in network. If you go out of network, except in the case of a true medical emergency, then you won't have any coverage. So what I would highly recommend you do, and you can do this here, is add doctors and facilities to determine if these plans are covered by the doctors and specialists that you already utilize. If you're somebody that's flexible and you want to make a switch based upon your health insurance plan, then you can make an informed decision. Or if you're somebody that has a doctor or specialist or hospital that you absolutely must utilize, then you make sure that you pick a plan that works with those doctors and specialists and hospitals. Now, all plans on the marketplace will cover the 10 essential benefits. They may offer additional benefits, but they all have to offer at least the 10 essential benefits. So those would be ambulatory patient services, emergency services, hospitalization, pregnancy, maternity, and newborn care, 
mental health and substance use disorders, prescription drugs, rehabilitative and habilitative services, laboratory services, so any tests that you need done, preventative and wellness services, and pediatric care. They also must offer coverage for birth control and breastfeeding coverage. And then there are additional benefits that can be offered on the marketplace like dental, vision, and medical management programs. You can compare these benefits and others when choosing your plan to make sure that you're choosing a plan that has the right benefits for you. That being said, just because a plan offers dental or vision doesn't necessarily make it a better plan, especially if it is a lot more expensive because dental and vision can be found both on and off the marketplace for relatively inexpensive. So definitely don't choose a more expensive plan just because it offers dental coverage. Now let's scroll down. So you can see there are some other plans available here. This one is a bronze plan that offers an HSA, so it would be considered a high deductible plan, but it has an HSA that you can contribute to. HSA monies are basically, it's an interest-bearing account that you contribute to, and that amount is pre-tax, so it'll lower your taxable income. Also, if you withdraw the money for a qualified medical expense, and it's a very, very long list, it even includes things like chiropractic care and over-the-counter drugs like Advil, that would be considered a qualified medical expense. And if you hold on to that HSA until you turn 65, I know that's a long ways away, but if you hold on to it until then, you can use it as a basic retirement account. And in the meantime, you can even invest a certain portion of your HSA. This plan is good because it's offering you co-pays as opposed to co-insurance. Co-insurance is a percentage of the cost, and sometimes those costs can be really expensive. So even if you're only paying 30%, that could be pretty significant, as opposed to a fixed cost, which is a co-pay. Let's go back up and do a little bit of filtering. I'm going to add a filter here because if we're talking about trying to keep this affordable, then let's look and say we only want to spend up to $200 per month. Apply filters. Okay, so we've chopped down the plans to eight plans to choose from. These plans are all under $200 per month once that premium tax credit has been applied. So that would make it much easier to compare. And you can compare three plans at a time. Just click this little compare box right here. Let's scroll down to one of the bottom ones. So here we go. Here's the estimated monthly premium with that tax credit, your deductible, your out-of-pocket maximum, your plan metal level, plan type, they're all HMOs right now what I'm looking at. Star rating, here's more information, plan documents, cost for medical care. This is really helpful because it'll give you sort of a more thorough breakdown of what costs might be as opposed to just that general 40% or $30 copay or whatever it is. So this breaks it down by the service access to doctors and hospitals. So none of these are PPOs or even EPOs. Um, Now what is interesting here is that, like I said, these plans are all HMOs, which ordinarily means that you need a referral to see a specialist. But for whatever reason, this plan, you don't need a referral to see a specialist. So that is kind of a nice added benefit. Now if we're talking about the less expensive plans available on the marketplace. Basically what they are offering you is an out-of-pocket maximum, which yes, I know seems high. When we're talking about $9,000, $7,000, of course that seems high. But that is not the goal to spend that in a given year. That's really to protect you in case you have major medical needs. If you are diagnosed with a very serious illness, If you experience a very, very serious and difficult to treat injury, maybe one that requires surgery, well then that $9,000 doesn't seem so expensive compared to the tens or maybe hundreds of thousand dollars it might be without that out-of-pocket maximum. So these plans, you're paying a minimal amount on a monthly basis to have access to basic health care. We're talking about those preventative services, vaccinations, um, trips to the urgent care, etc. to have access to those more basic services and to protect you from major medical debt. Now, yes, if you do go up to one of the more expensive plans, and let's take a look at that right now. I'm going to get rid of the filters. I'm actually going to put us at sort of the more expensive range. Let's do 400 to 478. Now we have lower deductibles because really before you were almost entirely on your own prior to meeting the deductible, these are pretty low deductibles. Uh, look at this plan here. So your your monthly premium is, you know, it's not cheap. It's $407.23, but 
But from day one, even prior me- prior to meeting the deductible, if you had to go to the urgent care, it's $40. If you have to go to a specialist, it's $60. Your primary is $20. Outpatient mental health, $20. Generic drugs are $10. So this plan really is saving you money if you need more regular care. Your out-of-pocket maximum is a little bit lower, but again, the out-of-pocket maximums are more so there to protect you from major medical bills. It's not to be expected that you're going to reach that on a regular basis. Then there are short-term medical plans. Now, short-term medical plans used to have a pretty bad reputation, but they have majorly evolved in recent years. A young and healthy person can often get a short-term medical plan with some pretty all-encompassing coverage for as little as $100 per month. Short-term medical plans offer nationwide PPO coverage, which is pretty much unavailable on the marketplace. And you can really pick and choose your benefits to meet your needs. So they definitely go beyond the basic doctor visits and prescriptions. Now there are some changes coming to short-term medical plans in the upcoming years, and even as of right now, they're not available in all states. And of course, they're not ideal for all people, but if they are a plan that might work for you, then it's definitely something that you want to consider now while they're still available. You can enroll in a short-term medical plan at any point. There's no specific enrollment period. And very often, you can get a plan for a period of up to three years. Now, they're great for a young, healthy person because they actually do require medical underwriting, unlike group health insurance or a plan through the marketplace. And that means a younger, healthier person will have access to better rates than somebody that's either older or has bigger health concerns. If you're young and healthy and don't go to the doctor too frequently, you may just want something in place for major medical needs. In that case, you may want to look at a catastrophic coverage plan. You can take care of your basic preventative care by paying out of pocket, but still have a catastrophic coverage plan in place. Short-term medical plans used to be referred to as catastrophic coverage plans, and there are options on and off the marketplace, but basically these plans are designed to help you should you incur major medical bills. They're there to protect you with an out-of-pocket maximum just to help protect you from major medical bills should you receive an unexpected and possibly quite costly medical diagnosis. So if you're a younger, healthier person, you could take care of preventative services and vaccinations, your wellness checkup by paying out of pocket and just have one of these types of plans in place should you need major medical care. As always, if you have any questions whatsoever, you can reach us with the number on the screen or in the comments below. Now, some of these types of plans do have enrollment periods, especially marketplace plans, and we're in the open enrollment period now. So if that is the type of plan that you're interested in, make sure to check out this video up here that I'm going to put at the end of the video. That way you can learn more about marketplace insurance plans. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.